the 6th of April 2024. Incidentally, the day that Jan van Riebeek landed in the Cape and Julius Malema's nightmare began. <laughs> I'm gonna talk in this what a fuck moment. It's been a while since I did a what a fuck moment and this one is too good to miss. But before I start, I want you to look at this clip about the men that wanted to be left alone. The most terrifying force of death comes from the hands of men who just wanted to be left alone. They try so very hard to mind their own business and provide for themselves and those they love. They resist every impulse to fight back, knowing the forced and permanent change of life that will come from it. They know that the moment they fight back, their lives as they have lived them are over. The moment that the men who wanted to be left alone are forced to fight back, it's a form of suicide. They are literally killing off who they used to be. Which is why, when forced to take up violence, these men who wanted to be left alone fight with unholy vengeance against those who murdered their former lives. They fight with raw hate and a drive that cannot be fathomed by those who are merely play-acting at politics and terror. True terror will arrive at these people's door and they will cry, scream, and beg for mercy, but will fall upon the deaf ears of the men who just wanted to be left alone. Let those words sink in. Think about it. Actually replay it to get your mind in the right state. I'm going to talk about a discussion that Yuval Noah Harari had. And that guy, we know him. That is Schwab's Boyke, the clever one that sells us all the shit Triple X is offering. And I'm going to play little clips and then discuss it. And you will be surprised at some of the things that he is showing without saying it. He is the guy that want us all chipped. He is the one that refers to useless eaters. He is the one that wants to let AI rewrite the Bible. And he sounds so clever when he tells you about it. You need to take note of the following. Yes, at a stage, Putin was one of Schwab's young global leaders. And there are many photos that prove it. But that was a while ago, a long while ago. Putin saw the belly of the beast and stepped out. And now they hate him. For a long time, Triple X has been ruling the roost. Then Russia kicked them out. First the Rothschilds and Russia took control of their own central bank. Then Soros and all his NGOs. And just for good measure, Putin issued a warrant of arrest for Soros, dead or alive. Think about that. And then Putin took Russia's assets back from that last X in the triple X, the capitalists, and he nationalized a hell of a lot of their assets. That is the reason why they hate him and why they launched their mighty media machine against demonizing all the Russians. Xi Jinping watched it and saw the things that was happening and he did the same. Now you would want to think that I don't know what I'm talking about. You must go and look at the details. Look carefully. Suddenly, Schwab's dream of one world was shattered and he ended up with only the West, which is 20% of the world population and a small percentage of the world's natural resources. And they are worried. Rattled is the better word. Now, I'm going to play you a clip from that Harare interview. Listen carefully. 
You still believe that Russia Ukraine is the most important yes. geopolitical conflict out there. Talk, talk for a couple minutes about where you think it is and where it's going. I mean, basically, if Russia is allowed, is allowed to win, that's the end of the global order as we have known it for decades. The most fundamental rule was that you cannot just invade and conquer and annex another country, a neighboring country, just because you're stronger. What the fuck is he talking about? Invading another country. That is exactly what their main puppet, the United Snakes of America, has been doing for the past 70 years. Not conquering those countries, no. Destroying them, destroying their infrastructure, and installing a puppet government. That is what they've been doing. They have been doing that. Vietnam, Korea, Libya, Iraq, Yemen, Syria, Afghanistan, the Balkans, and more. Always bombing and destroying and killing literally millions. But because it was done in the name of democracy, it was good in the eyes of these evil fuckers. Then came Ukraine, and Putin is whipping their asses. Suddenly, they are at war with a country that can actually fight back. And now they are losing. And they don't know how to spin that loss so that they still look good. This was the case for centuries, for thousands of years. It was not the case. If we talked earlier about state budgets, the reason the average expenditure on the military went down from 50% to 7% and released all these resources to healthcare, education, and so forth, is because most people, most countries felt that uh, um, they're safe. That even if they have a strong neighbor, it's just not done anymore. They, 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 I mean, maybe there'll be some kind of border clash or whatever, but the idea that the neighbors will just invade us conquer us and annex our, our, our country, it's not just not done. And this is exactly what uh, Putin is trying to do in Ukraine. What utter bullshit. No country was safe with the United States of terrorists who were roaming free and without opposition. He makes a big story of military budgets that fell in favor of social programs maybe for a few years after World War II. But then the MIC, the Military Industrial Complex, rose and is devouring basically all money of those countries, making the triple X leeches stinking rich. Look at how America's infrastructure is falling apart. Look at the state of their cities. Look at the state of their unemployment. Look at the devastation of their middle class. But he sits there with a broad smile and talks a lot of shit. But look at his face. Watch his body language. That guy is in a flat panic. You know, for many generations, the democratic game was a kind of double act of conservatives and progressives, like a car with a, a, the brakes and the fuel pedal, you press this, you press that, you change, going too fast, going too slow. And suddenly, conservative parties all over the world are committing suicide and turning into radical revolutionary parties. That the, the basic idea of conservatism is to conserve to conserve institutions, to conserve traditions. It's the progressive who say, let's move faster, let's change things, let's, let's destroy institutions. And the conservative says, no, 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 let's calm down. We don't understand the world very well. You think this institution should be destroyed, but actually it's, 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 it's important. And now the ones who are trying to destroy institutions and traditions are the conservatives. Amazing how they are always able to dictate the narrative. How clever of him to demonize the conservative people and rebrand them as revolutionary. I love to see these evil fuckers cringe. But you think about, for instance, the 6th of January and the kind of, the, the, the mythological moment of the conservative philosophy 
is the storming of the Bastille. When Burke says, you know, this is a bad idea. It will end badly. And this, was the, and this is kind of the, the creation story of conservatism. And on the 6th of January, you have all these conservatives cheering the storming of the Bastille. I'm actually laughing. Give him points for noticing the Bastille moment. <laughs> they are panicking. <laughs> they know they cannot outnumber the decent people. And he knows very well there comes a moment that men, good men, step over fear and come for that what was installing the fear. He knows it. He's his air quotes, so openly a sign of panic. And I laugh at it. Reality is beginning to kick in. He knows the global south, as they call it, is coming for them. With Putin leading the charge and Xi Jinping solidly behind him. And the, the progressives are basically doing what they've been doing for decades. What I, I, what I don't understand is this kind of self-immolation of conservative parties. And again, you can, in the US, you can try and, and explain it in all kinds of, of local dynamics. But because you see it in more and more places around the world... Um, um... More of the same, trying to demonize the conservatives, the good people of this world. But is, I mean, if I wanted to take the MAGA position, mm -hmm. right, which is New York, so it's hard to do. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, you have a lot of people that are saying, well, you supported globalization mm -hmm. um, and it hollowed out our working class, our middle class. You know, you supported all of this automation, but what about like the way we used to live? You allowed all this immigration, but who are we? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, many of them would argue that conservatism is trying to like focus on the historic. But values. why, what? Perfectly okay. Yeah. Why the attack on institutions? Why the attack on the institution of the elections? Why the attack on uh, uh, all, the, all, the, all the civil servants as deep state? I mean, this is not conservative. If you believe those institutions no longer reflect or support the people or the values. Then you become the revolutionary. Yes, yeah. again, uh, uh, th this is the narrative. That's the narrative. That's yeah. the narrative. I'm, I'm, you can, we can argue it's true, it's not true. I'm just making an observation. This is a revolutionary narrative. It's a narrative saying all the institutions or most of the institutions of the country are dysfunctional. We need to destroy them and start from scratch. This is the French Revolution. This is the Bolshevik Revolution. This is not conservatism. So you can say it's still true. We still need to do it. This part made me smile. This evil fucker is desperately trying to justify and protect institutions that they, Triple X, established and financed specifically to give them full control over us. He sees that the people is waking up and have identified the viper nests. And he knows <laughs> they are, their time is up. He knows it. But he cannot acknowledge it. He must desperately try and retain control. Control that has already slipped out of their hands. He knows their time is up and he knows that their gender confused woke weaklings will not survive when the real men come for them. But look at this image. I've taken a clip out of the interview. Look at this image. What the fuck is that what I'm seeing? Think about it. But, uh, uh, and the other thing I would say is about this you know, narrative of globalization. Maybe it's true of the US, but what about Brazil? What about India? What about Poland? There are so many countries that benefited from globalization and you still see analogous processes. So uh, I think globalization and, 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 and the, the, the impact on the job market, it, it's, too, it's, an, it's an easy solution, but it doesn't cover what we see globally. He is frantically trying to justify that mysterious promised big 
global thing. But naming countries that they so desperately try to suck into their web, but then Putin and BRICS stopped that plan. I want you to think about this and maybe play it again and again and let it sink in. Me and you are witnessing the spectacular collapse of the West, the Western Empire and the United Snakes of America military machine with NATO, that other terrorist organization is not a match for Russia, China, Iran. They are not a match for them. They know it, but they are desperately trying to keep the illusion alive. Now, I will use his quotes, trying to keep their hegemony alive their power alive. It is the end. We are seeing it right in front of us. Let's not fool ourselves. It is going to be fucking dangerous, but it is also going to be exciting. And I am extremely happy to see the people, the ordinary people waking up. Yeah, and I've been talking about tribes and I've always, not always, initially received a hell of a lot of negative comments about my tribe stories. But you have to acknowledge tonight, it is only the tribes that will survive. Please give me a like and a subscribe and share the thing. And I want to say thank you to the people that are supporting the channel financially. It is really making a difference. But you know that I have committed everything to this mission of mine. And my mission is to make sure for as long as I can that you hear the truth and not the bullshit. Have a great day.